miracles that once took place in the temple. Greater influence on China than any other human being. But although ritual and music were important to him, he was never a religious teacher. And the whole point is that Confucianism is not a religion, but a code of behavior. He set order in society. You must put responsibility onto man and his actions instead of relying on the supernatural. Social and political harmony depends on the moral conduct of every member of society. Each person has his own position and his own obligations. Wife must obey husband. Son must obey father. All must obey the emperor. But those in the position of power must in return behave with righteousness and justice and wisdom. You must obey with respect and rule with kindness. The cardinal Confucian virtue is this sense of humanity and benevolence. It is not an egalitarian vision of society, but it is one which has always fitted naturally into the ancient Chinese pattern of close family ties and absolute rule. And this sense of hierarchy and of moral obligation towards one's family and society is still at the very heart of the Chinese way of life. Mouth of the river is the land of Confucius, the famous philosopher of ancient China. After years during which communist leaders tried to discredit Confucius, his birthday in 551 BC is now celebrated each August in Chufu, the town of his birth. Confucius is known for his teachings on morality and government. His emphasis on family respect, duty, and obedience has remained a mainstay of Chinese thought and has proved useful to most Chinese leaders. This town of 10,000 has a lot more to celebrate. 3,500 of those around here believe they are direct descendants of Confucius himself. A fresh grave in the cemetery of the Kung family in Chufu. A monument to the most influential figure in Chinese history, Kung Fuzi, Confucius. It was Confucius who transformed the magic of the Bronze Age into the conception of the state as a moral order sustained by virtue and ritual. Confucius lived in that astonishing Axis age when the Buddha was alive and Pythagoras and the Greek philosophers, the Jewish prophets. Not a religious leader, but the codifier of China's traditions in history, poetry and ritual. His teachings were the ideal of Chinese government for 2,000 years. At the center of Confucius' message was a very simple and original idea. He wasn't concerned with God or the afterlife or heaven. I don't know anything about those things, he said. His concern was that of every government today on earth. How do you build a just and stable society here? And his answer was this. Goodness was the essential quality needed to keep society together. People are not born good. They need to be taught goodness, rulers and ruled. But it was essential that the rulers were taught goodness, spiritual and intellectual, because if rulers rule with unjust harshness and severity, meeting out punishments with regimentation, then people lose their faith in the law. They lose their respect for themselves. 
They have no sense of shame. But if people are taught goodness, then they have all those qualities, and they regulate themselves. Confucius' vision, then, was of a moral society bound together by mutual respect and trust. And though he was an aristocrat, it was an anti-authoritarian idea, because the ideology would rest with the scholars, not with the emperors, who themselves had to obey that golden mean. Otherwise, they risked forfeiting the mandate of heaven, as even today's rulers of China have found out. In the last few years, the rulers of China have revived some of the old Confucian traditions, at least in their outward form. Performance of these rituals ceased after the communist revolution. These are actors, and this ceremony in Confucius' hometown is for tourists. They're largely foreign Chinese tourists from Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Singapore, rediscovering roots severed temporarily, it would now seem, in 1949. It's a vision of a splendid past which the rulers of China in our time attempted to do away with in the belief that new traditions could replace them. But just when we think we've shaken it off, the past has an uncanny habit of coming back to restate its old claims on our loyalties. The reclaims of this music was written by Confucius, a scholar and teacher who lived three centuries before the Qin Emperor, around 500 BC. His influence has been vitally important in the history of China. He advocated a benevolent approach to government. And it was his teachings that the first emperor tried to suppress. For Confucius, the essence of government was the bringing about of a harmonious social hierarchy. He took the family as his ideal. The nation should be like a huge family with a father at its head. It should be governed not by force, but by moral example. The fundamental Confucian virtue was a sense of humanity and benevolence and respect for others, obedience to those above you and righteousness towards those below. The superior man should be honorable, educated and cultured. Women 